Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad you could join me. Weather's been a little bit off here, so I have not made it down to the Connecticut shoreline to do any more fishing. So today we are back in the woods and we are hiking in the Tunxis State Forest. I wanna say this is like uh, Heartland, East Heartland, Bark Hampstead, Connecticut, something along those lines. Um, this is a pretty big forest. I'm going to be taking you to an area that has, uh, some caves, some rock formations we call caves. Uh, maybe take you down to the marshlands, uh, bear, deer, moose frequent this area. Um, so maybe we'll see some wildlife while we're in here and, uh, yeah, we'll see what else we get into. But that's where we're headed today, folks. We're going to get deep in the woods. Let's get moving. As you can see, folks, just getting out here, start of the trail. It looks like the uh, MDC, which is our water people, just like the uh, in Florida, you have the water authority. Looks like they've been doing some clear cutting on their side over here. Uh, maybe defining their boundary a little bit more. Um, the area that I am hiking, um, the Tunxa State Forest, uh, does have deer hunting, does have turkey hunting. Uh, they do not have a bear season or a moose season here in Connecticut. The moose population is not big enough. And I won't get into the reasons why they don't have a bear season, but they absolutely should. And that is, of course, for population control. Um, but yeah, that, that you have to, uh, you have to do so. You have to be seen. But yeah, we're just starting out down the trail. It appears that I am the only one here. Um, there is another entrance at the other end of town. It's a little more rugged. I took some back roads here and, uh, parked outside the main gate. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the only one hiking in here so far. And uh, like I said, this area is used for hunting, but there is no hunting season right now. So, it should just be me and the wildlife. Boy, I gotta tell you folks, this area was not like this. Take a look at all this cutting here. If you're a Connecticut resident and you subscribe to my channel, you should be calling the governor's office, calling the DEP office, and tell them you are not happy with this clear cutting crap. This is disgusting. You know, they harvested out whatever they did and they just left it a mess. A total mess. And that's really from uh, walking all the way in here. I'm noticing this on the sides of the trail here. On the MDC property side, they have stopped. But this is all on the state side. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing. It really honestly is.
Looks like a beaver hut down at the end of it. Just had a lot of algae this season. I don't remember this pond ever being like this. Got some fresh coyote scat right there. You know it's fresh because it rained last night and yesterday. So we'll keep our eyes open for coyotes as well. Nice old stone wall someone they put in a long, long time ago. Now the trail goes straight or it splinters off over that way and that leads all the way back out to uh, another parking area like I told you. And the marshland is out that way too. Uh, so we're going to be coming back and hitting that trail, doing the marsh real quick, and then we'll exit out at the end. Um, but yeah, we're going to come up here. We shouldn't have too much longer. And then we'll run into these rock formations that kind of form the little caves and what have you. This is a old foundation. Uh, located right out here by the pond area. Imagine that. Somebody used to live out here in this forest. Here is another foundation. So it's probably a chimney at one time. Looks like that was the steps or something. I don't know. All right, we just turned off of that main trail to a side trail. It's the blue trail. We're going to be approaching these rock formations. We'll do it with ease. We'll go with caution. We'll go slow. Don't know if there's any bear in the caves. We'll take our time. Look how massive that rock is, huh? Give you a perspective. It goes up there a little ways. Our goal is to go and be to uh, climb up to the top of that and uh, overlook everything. We go to my phone here. Turn on my flashlight because I forgot my flashlight in my backpack. Got to put it in. Took it out before this hike. You can't really see, but uh, that's just a small one. Just a small one. Probably get a better look at the. Uh, I think there's a couple bigger ones. We got to walk around to. The other side of the rock here. Okay. Kind of a little one right there. Let's see what uh, see what we can get into over here. Again, bears like caves, so we will proceed with caution. Hello. Those 
spider web there. Hello! Hello! Just give you a little look. It's a nice little echo too. And it doesn't really go back that much on the right. Um, it really kind of cuts off. Yeah, it could squeeze in there, but it just really cuts off. That's it. There's nothing more other than that right there. Now we're coming across to the side of the, uh, the side of the cave area. Again, our trail is going to be over there somewhere, um, unless it's depleted, and then I'm going to have to come up with another uh, way to get up to the top. And there might even be a trail system that'll that'll bring me up to the top. So if I can't go uh, the route I normally go, well then I'm going to go the other way. But we will get up there. For all you rock climbers that are all skillful and young and everything, kudos to you. You could have at it if you ever come and check this place out. Me, I'm 50, waiting on my ARP card and enjoying the benefits of that. So, <laughs> so I am, uh, I'm not going to be doing all that crazy climbing. Um, yeah, small little cave area. And that's just really, that's just the ridge that's right there and just rock, nothing there. So let's climb up here and see if we can go this way. Yeah, just to give you a good look of all the rock formation along the way here. Straight up, curvature of this one, and there's the trail. All right, let's see what we can do here with this climbing. Bear with the uh, camera footage for a minute. Getting a first-hand look at what I'm looking at and what I'm, what I'm dealing with. Things mossy. It's all wet, slippery. So take a look. Be careful. Adjust. Hmm. Like I said, there's probably an easy way to do this, but I'm here and I'm getting my exercise on, so I'm going to do it this way. You can see there's the incline. <laughs> Good thing I didn't bring the trekking poles for this. I'd have no place to put them. Thought about it and I said, nah, this isn't the hike for that. Don't need them for this. All right, folks, I think we're just about to the top here. And we've reached. This rock formation here. And over there is kind of the overlook. I mean, you can overlook from here, but that's the main one right there. Watch our step going down. Ah, there we go.
Let me figure this out. We'll get there. And here's the overlook. It's really all forest, obviously, but let's go a little hike up. Well, since we reached our goal, let's go up here to the rock formations. We're gonna be headed back out to the blue trail. We'll bring it on down there. Should bring us past this formation onto the bigger trail system uh, above where we got off uh, the trail. And then we'll hike, hike back and then we'll be taking that turn and going to the marsh area. Just watch our step. As you can see, it's all slippery slope here, uh, especially since it rained. Just want to be careful moving around the rocks, leaves, debris, all that stuff. Let's cut them another look down in the cave system down there. If you were daring, you could probably hike right down here, go down in, but there's no need. There's no need for that at all. I've shown you the ways that you can go. It's really simple. No need to hurt yourself. So yeah, we'll continue down the blue trail here. Um, just gotta figure out where it goes, get down there, get down. Obviously, that's not the way that I came down. I came down from over there. There's no clear markers on anything over there for the blue trail. So you have to just kind of finagle it, figure it out as you're coming down. I shut the GoPro off, put it in my pocket. Didn't want to lose it. Descending down the hill's a little slippery. Didn't want to take the chance of losing anything. So now we walk back out, main trail. I, like it. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Maybe you can a little bit better now. So it looks like uh, a dog print. So there's no dogs out here. Not to say that nobody came out here yesterday, but uh, there's a print. Uh, roughly there's a print. That's my shoe print. Um, so yeah, could be a coyote. It's definitely frequenting this area. You've seen the scat already. I'll tell you, for the most part, it really is beautiful landscape. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. It is hard to, hard to beat a New England forest. Honestly, it is. Yeah, there's some forest down south. Maybe some out west. I don't know much about the west. But it is honestly hard to beat a New England forest. Okay, folks, we're coming into the marsh area. Now, as we look down the hill, I'm going to pan to my left up in this deep thicket of woods and everything. And I know I have seen moose sign in there um, from the tracks to the droppings. I know that moose are in there somewhere. Um, they definitely are. As you kind of pan down here, maybe you see the marsh through the trees. Sometimes I would see some sign in there over here to my right. Now we're going to kind of ease in here quietly. Um, there's this main trail right here and then the blue trail goes off to the side. We're going to go off to the blue trail. Um, I'll show you what's over there. Okay, so off of the blue trail is a primitive camping site. I'm going to show you that. Now, the only way to access 
this primitive camping site is you need to hike in. There's no driving in, period. You hike everything in, you hike everything out. So basically this is the this is the area. We're kind of walking through it. You got that little area right there. You got this nice stream that follows all the way through. If you have allergies, bring your Benadryl or whatever other allergy medicine that you take because you're in the woods, you're in the forest, and if you're camping overnight, you never know. Just be safe. Bug spray, bring bug spray. Make sure you apply that. I forgot mine, so I am uh, battling the bugs a little bit. Somebody left an axe there. Do some chopping of wood. Do a little fire pit. And right there, Ryan Brook camp area. So whatever you bring in, you bring out. That's the way it works here. Okay? There's no excuse to leave your trash. What you bring in, you bring out. Um, as you can see, the marker is straight ahead there. Uh, blue trail. So you can follow the blue trail up to that other parking lot. And um, that's where you would basically hike in from if you were going to do an overnight right here. In this area. And uh, yeah, for your food and everything, make sure you have a bear bag. Make sure you put it up high. As I mentioned earlier, bears frequent this area. Okay? So you don't just have moose, turkey, deer, coyote, whatever cats are around, meaning big cats, not your domesticated kind. Yeah, you're going to want to hoist, hoist that up somewhere here. So you'll have to figure that out. But yeah, primitive camping right here. Uh, I believe the state allows it for one day and you must notify the state that you are coming inside Tunxis State Forest uh, and you're going to overnight camp at uh, the Roaring Brook camp area and uh, they grant you permission. They will let you know uh, yes or no. I believe it's only one night. You're going to want to check with the uh, DEEP here in the state of Connecticut if you plan on doing it. And this is for the Tunxas State Forest. Um, should you need any help, anything go wrong or anything like that up in this way, I want to say you have maybe the East Heartland and Heartland Fire Department. Um, you may have Bark Hampstead East Fire Department uh, that could come out this way. Uh, I believe there's a resident state trooper's office that is out here. Okay. Uh, not sure who would come out here for an ambulance, but uh, yeah, you'd get some fire departments and a uh, resident state trooper, and the DEP would probably send out a conservation officer as well. So, just a little FYI, a bit of information for, you know, should anything go wrong out here if you get hurt or, or what have you. Cell service has been on and off. Um, I've been getting some inquiries from uh, subscribers where I'm at, what I'm doing right now. So, uh, I can tell you that uh, cell service is, uh, it's spotty, but sometimes you get it here. But that's the camping area. Now we're going to hike out to the pond. Now if you're going to use, a little FYI, if you're obviously you're going to use water out here, you see the nice stream going about and everything, make sure you use a filtration system. Do not trust this. When I show you the pond, you will understand why it is all connected. Okay, you're going to want to filtrate this or make sure that you bring enough of your own water in here. Hike it in. Um, right now I'm wearing a backpack and I have a two liter system inside my backpack. It's a light backpack. I use it for biking. Um, this is the lightest one that I will wear for biking and hiking. No issues with that. It's only got a few pockets. It's limited. Um, the one that I will wear for longer hikes is a little more detailed, uh, carries a little more water, I can carry a little more equipment in it, more room. But yeah, just make sure, uh, water filtration or bring your own water supply. 
big enough food. That's it. Primitive camping. If you love the wilderness. I happen to love it. That's why I'm in here and I'm showcasing it for you guys. So now we're going to walk out of this and straight across is the pond. So it's, it's slightly bigger than the first pond that we came upon when we were hiking a trail. Now you might say, oh, but Jason, you've got these areas right here where it looks like a vehicle comes in and blase blase and yeah but you are not allowed to bring a vehicle down here folks i'm telling you there should be a gate um at the other end at the parking lot i mean i can see some like camping chairs from here that somebody's left in the woods kind of disgusting they shouldn't have left them here um i don't think they maliciously did it i think that they probably <laughs> actually use it quite frequently for camping down here or they use it uh as hunting sitting chairs when they when they hunt in these woods um so i wouldn't get too nitpicky on them for that but yeah you know better you, you just don't leave stuff out here in the state forest it's like if you're going to deer hunt in this area you can bring your blinds, you can set up your your blinds, you can set up um, your stands. Uh, I just, I believe they have to be removed by the end of hunting season. Okay, uh, don't quote me on this. You might have to check the DEP. It used to be just DEP. Why they need another E, who knows. You might have to check their site. Or you can... Uh, call their law enforcement division and you can ask them uh, the conservation officers that I know uh, well most of them are retired but uh, that I have had interaction with they're really friendly they'll give you the scoop as to what you can do and what you can't do they're good people they got a job to do like everybody else but this is the pond and it does not look like there's any wildlife around nothing on the outskirts no ducks no geese nothing Just to give you a little look, little wooden bridge you can cross over, okay, and you can follow, like I mentioned earlier, you can follow this blue trail system, okay, and it goes all the way other to that other parking lot. All right, I'm not going to hike out there because I don't think you guys need to see a parking lot, and it's the same amount of forest. You know that connects to all this um but yeah you would park that way or the way that i parked hike in bring your stuff if you are going to camp you know barring the dep still allows that and you know you're here for that one night come down obviously head back over the bridge over into that area and stay then you're good to go Well, everybody, that's going to conclude today's video, Tungsten State Forest. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. And also subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. So that way you know when all the videos come out. Uh, just want to mention, obviously, if you're going out hiking like this in the deep woods, no facilities, no anything. There's, there's nothing here like that. Um, be hydrated. Have your first aid. Okay, bug spray is always good. And when you're back at your vehicle, when, you, when you're done for the day, if it's only a day hike and you're not doing overnight, um, but also do this overnight as well. Make sure you're checking yourself for ticks. Now it is that season, it's that time, it's warm weather, the ticks are out, the animals are moving around, they carry ticks. Make sure you're checking yourself. So without any further ado, we'll see you all on the next adventure. Take care, everybody. Thank you for joining.